，你知唔知啊？如果拎走晒地球上所有嘅土壤同埋水呢，咁剩低嘅就只有你同埋我噶啦。真系噶？系啊，其实我同你都好重要嘅。如果冇咗石头呢，呢、這个地球上就唔会有动物、植物或者人类噶啦。点解你知咁多嘢嘅？因为我系一粒有过去嘅石头啦，知嘅梗系比你多啦。Where did the first rock come from? The oldest rock that we find on Earth is about like four billion years old only. Why the solar system is four point fifty six billion? That means actually the oldest rocks can't don't come from the Earth. They come from the from meteorites. Imagine million years after the beginning of the solar system, and the Earth is just an accumulation of rains and then rocks and then the planets. And the Earth is not homogeneous at all. You have the crust, the mantle, and the core. So maybe a rock that is a sedimentary rock at the beginning, made by accumulation of, for example, dead living things that had like shells, and the shells were made of rocks. They accumulate and they form by. But out of pressure, they form rocks. But then the sedimentary rock, further down, like few million years after, and then by pressure and temperature, is going to change, and it's going to be harder and denser minerals created, and it's going to be a metamorphic rock. And eventually, if it goes too deep, it's going to melt, it can go back to the surface of the Earth as lava. And the lava, when it reaches the Earth, solidifies and becomes a rock again. They go through a rock cycle, especially at the surface of the Earth. So you have this constant cycle, and the cycle can go on and on, and go from one to the other. Some geologists actually look deep into space to see what the minerals are, what the rocks are. They represent more the, the beginning of the solar system. So they can teach us about the history, the geology, the evolution of the Earth. 哇！估唔到一粒喺地球嘅石头咁有历史嘅、哦，咁我哋咧，我哋呢啲太空石头有咩故事噶？嗱，其实咧，我哋埋藏咗好多秘密嘅。A rock is an aggregation of minerals. The most difficult question is what is a mineral, right? <laughs> So a mineral is something that is natural, meaning that it's not created by man. It's inorganic, not a living thing, and it's a crystal that is organized. And sometimes this organization that you see at the atomic scale, they have a perfectly arranged structure. Think about a mineral as made of plenty of primitive shapes, such as Lego shape. With Lego, you can make plenty of different shapes, right? So there are different just shape of pyrite, meaning that it is made of iron and sulfur, and it crystallizes into the cubic system. We have a pile of three cubes, perfect cubes. The sphere that we have is by piling up cubes of pyrite and making them look like a sphere. And you will see that the minerals have perfect shape. Uh, they are just stunning. It looks like they're fasted by man, but they are not. So they're natural pieces of art. So that's why I'm always and still interested because we are really at the cross of science, nature, beauty, and human. Could be for prehistoric humankind when men were nomadic tribes going from one part to another part, and by traveling they find this. Shiny pebbles during their way. So, pearls, rocks,、uh, sometimes vegetables or teeth, bones, for example, are part of all this ornament. But among them, the most precious were really the shiny pebbles, because you have a very specific feeling, because you have this very specific relationship with this object. What are the requirements for become a gem? That's a good question because there is no real definition for a gem. If you look for the dictionary, for example, we used to say、uh, in the trade that a gem needs to be a mineral which is rare, beautiful, and durable. But to become a gem, we need to select maybe 100 for the designers, for the creator to use and to be suitable to be used at a gem. 
I think we all have an idea of what is a jewelry. It's an art made by men and women who are passionate for that and who are able to transform simple materials in an object of art. As a gemologist, of course, to me, is really the way to promote, to display, to show the beauty of gemstones and the exceptionality of gemstones. We are not looking for the most beautiful samples, but we are looking uh, every time for the sample that really tells a story, which tells the story of the pedagogy of the topic. We really wanted to show to our audience, to our visitors, why and how minerals are so exceptional and are so important for our everyday life. Hey, this time we have so many lights. Is it really important to us? Yes, we're going to be waiting for people. But it's a bit cold. Besides the heat, we have what to do with it. Minerals are everywhere. You just don't realize it, okay? So, for example, they are the building blocks of your buildings. The glass, the windows, is just melted sand. And the metal, what is the metal? Gold, platinum. These things come from minerals. One symbolic element, which is copper, copper wire. They conduct all the electricity. So, if you want to have electricity, you need copper. That is used for everything. The main component of your cell phone, you need five more times copper in electric cars and as we did with our previous cars. So copper was already a strategic element and it's nowadays even more a strategic element. We know about 6,000 mineral species nowadays and we're still discovering some new species. Thanks to the evolution of the techniques, we were able to redefine define new mineral species that are just very tiny. We are still discovering about 100 different mineral species every year. 哇！我急不及待想见下啲新朋友啊！喂，有人过紧嚟，咁我哋唔好讲呢啲住啦。<音樂>